All right, this is Don from CompuBeat.com, and I am giving an update on my current build. Um, this build is basically a revision of the previous build I did, which was with the Yellow Beast. Um, the design is very similar. Um, we are still using half-inch gas pipes supported um, by spacers to basically keep it from compressing. Um, I did go ahead and add the threaded rod to kind of secure everything up and put everything in position. This was optional on the previous machine. I decided to go ahead and actually do it on this machine. I, I like it. It actually came out pretty well. Um, so the, the motion is uh, very nice on these. So we're still using skate bearings on a minimum angle, um, which is uh, a lot of the cheaper uh, designs use that. So it works very well. Um, the Y, Z, and this is our X. So I'm really happy with that. Um, let's see, um, the design uh, of this, the, uh, the tensioning of the bearings is pretty simple. Um, same as my previous machine. Um, basically, this end is a floating end. It has a, it's like an oval, uh, it is, I'm sure the name works. Basically, it's a long uh, channel, and so the, 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 uh, design, the bottom plate floats, and that's where the bearings are sitting. So to tighten everything up, I basically just need to take uh, the clamp like this, which is you know, the Harbor Freight special. Um, Open it up. I use two of these when I tighten this up, and basically before you tighten anything down, I want you to assemble the rams and tighten the bearing in with the clamp. And uh, when it's all nice and square and you like it, you go ahead and tighten up your ends, and it's done. And it works really well. I haven't had any issues with it slipping. Uh, we're having loose on the previous machine, so I think it's fairly proven that it works. Um, it's very simple, so I'm uh, pretty happy with that. Um, let's see what else is there to talk about. Um, this is a fairly modular design, so um, all these pieces are very similar. Uh, all these rails, and there's four of them, there's two on the bottom, uh, on the X, one on the Y, and one on the Z, they're all exactly the same width, um, exactly the same. So all these pieces are basically very similar to one another. On the previous machine, I had made a 9-inch, I think, separation between the rails, and I did away with that here trying to simplify the design. Um, so everything is kind of basically based from this original design, which was just a simple rectangle, so basically this without the, uh, the lip for the, the leg, so basically um, it's adaptable, so I started with that, I added this lip to add this leg uh, on the, the um, Y carriage, I basically you know made it longer and curved it around so I could look in this top and bottom plate, uh, and you can see pictures of that on GrumpyGeek.com, I have uh, probably 12 or so photos um, of various pieces uh, posted, so if you want a better look, please go look, GrumpyGeek.com. And uh, so, very modular. Um, hopefully, um, this will allow me to continue to tweak the machine and modify it, or possibly design new machines without having to reinvent the wheel. And it's kind of a holy grail to kind of have this modular design. I think everyone tries to do it. Um, so, that comes with the basic machine. Um, on the previous machine, I had some issues with squaring. Um, so, I solved that on this machine by adding these two PVC pipes. And basically, they go into a rounded circle on the back and on the front and are secured in with threaded rod, and you basically just squeeze the machine together, and it yields a very rigid and very square machine, so I'm very happy with that. I believe that Probotics Fireball uses something very similar. Um, in fact, it's probably where I ripped it off from, so uh, credit where credit is due. Uh, I'm very happy with that. So um, that worked out very well. And uh, let's see the lead nuts. So these are the same style lead nuts as the previous machine. Basically, this lead nut carrier is cut out of um, Trex decking, I think it's one inch wide, and then I have these two nuts that I've created, um, yeah, manufactured created, um, on each one of these lead nuts, and there's one lead nut here, there's one on the back of the uh, Y carriage, and there's one on the back of the Z, the Z carriage, so there's three of them, obviously, uh, on the old machine there were four, but uh, anyway, so this is cut from um, half inch cutting board material, so I cut it, um, and I tapped it, um, I tried to make these spacings the same as I believe the uh, dumpster CNC nuts, so if I decided to use those, I can order them with a, the cutoff flanges and uh, go ahead and use them, so we'll see if that actually works. Um, but very simple, um, and it worked really well on my previous machine. I think I used nylon spacers on it uh, and tapped them, and I'm very happy with how it works. Um, so kind of a money saving feature there. And um, well, the, whole design, whole design, <laughs> the whole design is uh, currently using uh, 10 TPI screws, um, again, same as the previous machine. Um, hopefully I'll get closer to 60 on this one. Um, we'll see. I'm using surplus motors I got. I think the 220 ounce motors uh, going to be run by a dialectic board uh, running 24 volts. So 
uh, EMC is the driving machine, so uh, starting software. So uh, all stuff I know how to use. Um, other than that, I think uh, I think the other thing about issues. I've had two minor design problems uh, on this when I was working. Um, the first one was that this is exactly 12 inches. Uh, I bought a MDF shelving board to use as a table. Um, it's actually a nicer quality wood than what you get in the sheet um, when you buy it. Um, the problem is, is that it, it doesn't fit, so I'm probably going to just take a, a saw blade's width of uh, material off it and set it in there, see that RF and notch these. So I may do that. Don't know. Um, the other issue I had was that there was two supports here and here, which are basically the, where the bearings are riding. And um, when I went to put the lead, the, uh, lead screw in test, it hit these two pieces. So I basically just took a round file and kind of made a round channel for them to go through. Um, I'm going to correct that on the, uh, the CAD files. So, so that was really the, the biggest issue so, so far. So other things um, I forgot to mention, um, you can see on the back and on the front here and uh, here and here, they're basically, I'm still using the clamps that basically help secure the pipe in. It adds a little thickness here, makes it a little sturdier. Um, I also have a similar clamping here, but it's still an MDF uh, for the, on the gantry plates. I had to be a little careful to keep those from cracking, but I managed this time not to crack it. I did manage to crack the split wood three times. I'm not sure um, if I'm just torquing it too much or if I had an alignment issue. Um, but I had to recrack some of the wood, and I didn't recut any parts. Um, what I ended up doing is just using super glue and a clamp and a heat gun, and uh, kind of reformed the MDF, and it actually worked pretty well. Um, I wouldn't recommend breathing, breathing the fumes from that, though. Um, kind of toxic. Um, but overall, this is the machine. Works really well. I'm really happy with it so far. Uh, plan on hooking up the motors and electronics hopefully in the next week, so you actually should be able to see it run uh, in a short period here. So, uh, anyway, thank you for watching. Please come to my site and take a look. Any comments you want to add to uh, the discussion would be uh, welcome. I'm, you know, I'm sure there are things I can improve. Um, and that's it. So, again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you around. Thanks. Bye.